Saudi Arabia's ambitious line city promised to revolutionize urban living with a futuristic and sustainable design. However, the project is facing major challenges and is not going according to plan. Today, we're going to explore why Saudi Arabia's line city is failing. To understand why the project is failing, first we need to talk about the Saudi Vision 2030. Saudi Vision 2030 is a strategic framework that sets forward a series of plans to reshape Saudi Arabia's economic landscape, social fabric, and its international standing. Launched in 2016, the aim is to move the country away from its reliance on oil revenues and diversify the economy, while at the same time encouraging a more inclusive society that's based on modernization while also retaining its rich tradition, with all parts of it expected to be completed by 2030. Internally in the country, it's seen as vital to their long-term future, as historically Saudi Arabia's wealth has been built on its vast oil reserves. Currently, oil accounts for about 40% of the country's GDP and 75% of its revenue. And while it clearly has generated substantial revenue for the country, it's also made the economy heavily dependent on this single resource. As the world increasingly moves towards renewable energy alternatives and as global oil markets continue to face extreme volatility, Saudi Arabia could risk economic instability if it doesn't diversify its economy. Instead of doing this too late, Vision 2030 looks to make use of this immense wealth that the country currently has, and it's crucial to ensuring that Saudi Arabia can sustain its economy in a post-oil future. The plan outlines measures to grow sectors like tourism, entertainment, manufacturing, and technology, reinventing the country as a focal point for innovation and investment. One of the most interesting aspects of Vision 2030 is the social transformation that it sets out for Saudi Arabia. The country has long been known for its conservative politics, particularly in the regards to roles of women and young people. But the plan introduces reforms that are aimed at increasing participation from these parts of society. Recognizing their contribution is key to building a more competitive and dynamic economy. Empowering women, for instance, is a focus, with efforts to increase female participation in the workforce and to take on leadership roles. Similarly, young Saudis who make up a significant portion of the population are being encouraged to engage more actively in the economy and public life, with the hope that all this will create an environment that encourages and supports entrepreneurship and innovation. Vision 2030 also involves a major cultural shift towards openness and tolerance, which authorities have realized is necessary for Saudi Arabia to succeed on the global stage. In recent years, the kingdom has made efforts to promote a more open society by easing restrictions on entertainment and arts, while also encouraging the development of a lively cultural scene. These changes will not only make the country more attractive to foreign investors and tourists, but will also help create a more vibrant and creative domestic economy, showing that Vision 2030 is about more than just economic reform. There's no doubt that on the world stage, Saudi Arabia has always held an important position, particularly in the Arab world and the wider Middle East. As the site of Islam's two holiest sites, the country has significant religious influence, and its vast oil reserves has given it economic power too. But in an increasingly interconnected world though, economic power is becoming less about natural resources and more about technological innovation, global trade, and soft power. This is another element that Vision 2030 is looking to address, making Saudi Arabia a global player in areas beyond oil. By investing in sectors like tech, renewable energy, and tourism, the country can widen its influence and make itself an important voice in a wider range of international partnerships. Finally, Vision 2030 puts a focus on the development of people and recognizing that a diversified economy requires a skilled workforce. The plan includes major investments in education and training. Saudi Arabia does aim to encourage a knowledge-based economy where innovation and creativity are celebrated and where citizens have the skills to compete in a global marketplace. This involves reforming the education system to better align with the needs of modern organizations, as well as providing opportunities for learning and development throughout people's careers. Vision 2030 is, therefore, hugely ambitious in its aims, but Saudi Arabia certainly has the money to attempt it. The idea is that by investing in the right places, new technologies will need to be developed, and people will need to learn new skills to make them a reality. Let's take a look at some of the projects. Red Sea Global. With a budget of $23.6 billion, Red Sea Global, or RSG, is a highly ambitious part of the broader Vision 2030 strategy to diversify the nation's economy. Located along the western coast of Saudi Arabia, the Red Sea region has been identified as a great location for sustainable luxury tourism. 
The RSG project aims to establish Saudi Arabia as a premier destination for international travelers, attracting high-end tourists and investors, while promoting environmental sustainability and cultural preservation. The Red Sea project is committed to preserving 75% of the area's natural environment, including marine life, coral reefs, and biodiversity. This is significant, particularly as the region's coral reefs are among the most diverse in the world, and maintaining their health is crucial for the overall ecosystem. The new development also aims to achieve a carbon-neutral rating, relying entirely on renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power, and using cutting-edge technologies to ensure the efficient use of resources. Water conservation, too, is another important part of this, with plans to use sustainable desalination techniques to provide fresh water without harming the environment. There will also be a focus on marine research and conservation as part of this project, with plans to establish marine research centers that will study the local ecosystem and hopefully add to global knowledge on coral reef preservation. This research is not going to only benefit Saudi Arabia itself, but will also help wider efforts to protect marine life and make the country a major player in that sector. Red Sea Global is expected to be a major job creator, too, and drive economic growth in Saudi Arabia. The project is going to generate thousands of direct and indirect jobs across a variety of sectors, including construction, hospitality, and tourism services. And it's also hoped to attract significant foreign investment, boosting the country's profile as a global tourism hub, providing a sustainable source of income for the nation in the future. Kidia is another hugely ambitious Vision 2030 initiative, which looks to turn the country into a leading global destination for entertainment, sports, and cultural experiences. Located just outside Riyadh, Kidia represents a massive advance in the kingdom's efforts to attract tourism and create a local culture that appeals to residents and international visitors. Kadia is planned as a sprawling city of entertainment, sports, and arts, which will attract visitors of all ages and interests. The proposals include a wide range of attractions from amusement parks and world-class sports facilities to art galleries, live performances, and cultural exhibitions. By catering to a wider audience, Kadia aims to offer new recreational opportunities for locals. Essentially, leaders want to create a destination that rivals major global entertainment hubs such as Disneyland or Universal Studios, making it a must-visit place for everyone. One area is dedicated to theme parks and water parks, which are designed to offer attractions not available anywhere else in the region. Another area will be dedicated to sports, with state-of-the-art facilities for motorsports, soccer, and other international sports. There are also plans to feature nature and adventure zones, offering visitors the opportunity to explore outdoor activities such as hiking, camping, and wildlife experiences. Sports in particular are hoped to receive a major boost, with it being designed to host a large-scale international event like the Soccer World Cup, attracting global attention and making Saudi Arabia a key destination for sports tourism. From motorsports to esports, the range of planned activities are going to draw fans in from around the world. The impact on the Saudi economy is expected to be enormous, which justifies its planned $9.8 billion cost, and it's set to create thousands of jobs across various sectors, including construction, hospitality, retail, and event management. It's also set to generate significant tourism revenue, which will be a big help towards Saudi Arabia's goal of increasing non-oil income. The development is not only intended to serve as an entertainment destination, but also as a place to develop Saudi talent in sports, arts, and other creative fields. By providing world-class facilities for training and performance, Kadia will offer local athletes, artists, and performers the chance to develop their skills and showcase their talents on a global stage. How about the King Salman Park? Well, this park is one of Vision's 2030 flagship projects, which aims to transform the capital of Riyadh into one of the most vibrant cities in the world. Covering more than 5 square miles or 13 square kilometers, it's set to be the largest urban park in the world, offering a range of recreational, cultural, and environmental experiences for both residents and tourists. The park is expected to be a green oasis that combines nature with culture, arts, and entertainment, while promoting environmental sustainability and enhancing the quality of life of the city's residents. The scale and ambition of King Salman Park is almost hard to get your head around. It's intended to create a space that rivals and in some ways improves upon famous global urban parks like Central Park in New York and Hyde Park in London. With a range of facilities and attractions, King Salman Park will offer spaces for leisure, fitness, and cultural activities, along with dedicated areas for education and environmental sustainability. By providing these, the park's expected to become a focal point of community life. It's going to have huge green spaces, including landscaped gardens, wooded areas, and artificial lakes, all designed to provide a natural habitat for local wildlife. 
This green space is not only intended to enhance the aesthetic beauty of the city, but also to help counteract the effects of urbanization and climate change. Trees and plants will help reduce air pollution, cool the surrounding area, and promote a healthier living condition for residents. Like other urban parks around the world, King Salman Park will include several museums, art galleries, and theaters as places to showcase Saudi Arabia's rich culture, alongside international exhibitions and performances. That focus is an important part of Vision 2030, which aims to open up the kingdom to the world and promote cross-cultural exchange. The park's also designed to be a focal point for physical fitness and recreation, with a wide range of sports facilities including running tracks, cycling paths, and areas for team sports. Even though at a cost of $23 billion, it seems like a huge expense that the park is expected to easily make it back once it's fully completed, not just in financial terms, but in wider societal benefits as well. The Massar Destination It's a groundbreaking urban development project in Makkah that will completely change the way people experience the city. It's described as being a multifunctional and mixed-use urban development, which will blend modern architecture with cultural and religious significance. The project's designed to transform Makkah's urban landscape by providing a range of services and facilities for pilgrims, residents, and visitors, by taking care of their needs and enhancing their spiritual journeys to the holy city. Costing around $26.6 billion and covering an area around half square mile or about 1.2 square kilometers, Masar Destination is located along the main road that leads to the Grand Mosque. This position makes it convenient for the millions of pilgrims who visit Maka each year to perform Hajj and Umrah. With the main idea of the project being to give easy access to the Grand Mosque while offering facilities that are in line with the religious significance of this area. The entire project focuses on accessibility, ensuring that people of all abilities can easily move around and experience the sacred sites without any difficulty. The project will include a range of places to stay from luxury hotels to affordable rooms, allowing pilgrims from all different backgrounds to find somewhere to rest. Everything here is designed with a focus on comfort, safety, and spiritual well-being, and many hotels within Massar provide direct views of the Grand Mosque. In line with Vision 2030 ideals of environmentally friendly practices, most energy will be provided by solar panels, and it's hoped that this will have a much wider influence because with so many people traveling there from around the world, they'll take ideas back home with them. Massar destination is also to create more commercial and retail spaces, offering visitors a wider range of services. Crucially, this is all being done to enhance and not take away from the city's ancient history, working to preserve important historical sites while also introducing modern infrastructure. This delicate balance between the past and present will ensure the sacred atmosphere of Maka is retained, even as the city is modernized. How about Expo 2030? It's an exciting global event that Saudi Arabia has set $7.8 billion aside to host, with the aim of showcasing how the country has changed by the time Vision 2030 strategy is complete. Expos, which are also known as World Fairs, are major international exhibitions where countries come together to display their innovations, cultures, and future visions, and attract millions of visitors from around the world. For Saudi Arabia, hosting Expo 2030 is a unique opportunity to show its progress, develop international collaboration, and establish its role as a leading player on a global stage. In many ways, this would be the celebration at the end of Vision 2030, where all of the achievements can be shown, especially in areas like sustainability, smart cities, and economic diversification. It would be a chance to highlight the kingdom's investments in innovative technologies such as green energy projects, artificial intelligence, and urban development, all of which are key elements in its future-oriented economic strategy. The theme that's been proposed for Expo 2030 is the era of change leading the planet to a foresighted tomorrow, and it sets the tone for the country's desire to tackle global challenges. Through this theme, Saudi Arabia aims to position itself as a global leader in finding solutions to the pressing issues facing humanity, and the largest projects from Vision 2030 will be the cornerstones of this. Hosting Expo 2030 would be a massive boost to Saudi Arabia's cultural diplomacy and would allow the kingdom to present a new image to the world, one that shows modern thinking, innovation, and inclusivity while still honoring its cultural heritage. Rua Al Madina was another urban development as part of Vision 2030, and it's based in the holy city of Medina. Similar to Masar Destination, it's designed to improve the city's capacity to host millions of pilgrims and visitors each year, while making sure to protect its rich Islamic heritage. 
Rua al Medina plans to combine modern urban planning with cultural and spiritual significance of Medina, making it a world-class destination for religious pilgrims. Medina is home to the Prophet's Mosque, which is one of the holiest sites in Islam, and millions of Muslims from around the world would travel there. Rua al Medina is expected to expand the capacity of the city to host around 30 million visitors each year by 2030, something that will be achieved by building new hotels, homes, and commercial spaces. As with all Vision 2030 projects, sustainability and modernization is going to be important, while making sure to preserve the spiritual essence of Medina. A large part of the $37 billion this is expected to cost will be to incorporate environmentally sustainable practices in its construction. As it's such a historic place and must be preserved, the Rua al Medina project will make sure to integrate Islamic architecture and design into the new infrastructure. The project setting out to reflect the spiritual character of Medina through its urban design, ensuring that the new developments don't detract from the city's religious significance. Of course, it too is expected to play a major role in Saudi Arabia's efforts to diversify its economy. By enhancing Medina's capacity to accommodate more pilgrims, the project will significantly boost the city's tourism sector. This project is set to create thousands of jobs in construction, hospitality, and tourism, helping the country achieve its goal of expanding the non-oil sectors of the economy. Sports Boulevard Well, the $23 billion Sports Boulevard is a project that was designed to help promote healthier lifestyles and improve the quality of life for the kingdom's citizens. Located in the capital city of Riyadh, it will involve developing a sprawling urban green space that offers sporting, recreational, and cultural opportunities in the center of the city. The boulevard will feature a wide range of sports facilities and open spaces, including cycling and walking paths, running tracks, sports fields, and outdoor fitness equipment, all of which will encourage everyday physical activity by providing citizens with easily accessible spaces for exercise. One of the most impressive parts of Sports Boulevard is the planned creation of a dedicated cycling path, which will be over 84 miles or 135 kilometers long and make it one of the longest continuous cycling routes in the world. That's a statement about Saudi Arabia's efforts to promote cycling as a viable and sustainable mode of transport and recreation. It's also thought to be a sign that the country eventually hopes to host an Olympic Games at some point in the future. The boulevard isn't just a sports-centric project, though. It's also going to be seen as a hub for cultural and social activities. Alongside the athletic stuff, there's going to be cultural and entertainment venues such as public art installations, museums, outdoor performance spaces, and cafes. By blending sports with cultural enrichment, the boulevard is going to aim to enhance the social fabric of Riyadh, offering residents and visitors a varied urban experience that promotes both physical and mental well-being. How about the rig? The idea of Vision 2030 is to really push the boat out in terms of what's possible and to encourage investment and visitors from across the globe. And the rig certainly lives up to this. Launched in 2021, it's probably the most unique entertainment and tourism development that's ever been imagined, and it's being built on an offshore oil rig in the Arabian Gulf. The project is aiming to transform the traditional oil rig structure into a massive one-of-a-kind destination for adventure seekers and tourists. The project is going to cover an area over 3.2 million square feet or 300,000 square meters, making it the largest offshore entertainment structure in the world. On it, there will be a wide range of attractions which cater to a broad audience, from adventure lovers to families. This project will offer extreme sports like bungee jumping, base jumping, and skydiving, as well as water activities such as scuba diving, snorkeling, and jet skiing. And visitors will be able to enjoy state-of-the-art amusement rides, roller coasters, and themed attractions that make full use of this unique location. For those wanting a more relaxed experience, like me, the rig's also going to feature luxury hotels and high-end restaurants, plus observation decks that give stunning panoramic views across the Arabian Gulf. The rig's also designed to support a wide range of sustainable, friendly practices, so after being a place that's extracted hundreds of millions of barrels of oil, it's now going to reduce its environmental footprint by incorporating green technologies, such as renewable energy, sustainable waste management, and environmentally conscious construction methods. If it works, this could undoubtedly be one of the more unique tourist destinations on the planet, and could bring a huge amount of revenue to offset its $5 billion cost as well as further help establish Saudi Arabia as a premier tourist destination. While the projects I've spoken about so far are individual ones from around the country, Vision 2030 also has a $1.5 trillion megacity project, which is called NEOM. 
Located in the northwestern part of the country near the Red Sea, it covers an area of 10,000 square miles or over 26,000 square kilometers, and has been described as being a futuristic metropolis that will redefine urban living through cutting-edge technology, sustainable design, and a focus on improving quality of life. There's a number of different projects that come under the Neom umbrella, all of which are hugely ambitious, and include a floating industrial precinct for airports, tourist resorts, and the Line City. Let's look at Trojana. Trojana is one of the more surprising projects that's part of Neom, as despite a climate that Saudi Arabia is known for, it's a planned year-round alpine resort. Trojana will be unlike any other part of Saudi Arabia, combining outdoor luxury, adventure, and cutting-edge tech to create a destination that's going to compete with winter sports venues around the world. At an elevation of between 4,900 and 5,300 feet, or about 1,500 and 2,600 meters, Trojana is unique in the Arabian Peninsula, as it has the potential to become the kingdom's first outdoor ski resort. New artificial snowmaking technologies have been developed to ensure that the slopes will remain usable throughout the winter season, providing a winter sports experience in an otherwise desert nation. Along with the winter sports, Trojana will offer a wide variety of year-round activities for adventure seekers and nature lovers. You'll be able to enjoy hiking, mountain biking, and water sports on the development's man-made lakes. This balance of adventure and wellness make Trojana an inclusive destination that caters to a broad spectrum of people and demographics. Of all the projects, this one could be a real game-changer in the way that it attracts people from elsewhere in the world with such a unique combination of outdoor sports, luxury accommodations, and wellness experiences. It's also a site that could potentially bid to host a Winter Olympic Games, which would put it on the map forever and support the kingdom's goal of increasing tourism contribution to the GDP. Sindala is an exclusive island destination within Saudi Arabia's Neom project, which will be the kingdom's premier luxury getaway in the Red Sea. The plan is for the island to become the go-to place for high net worth individuals, with world-class facilities that cater to the most expectant of travelers. It's going to feature luxurious beachfront resorts, exclusive hotels, private villas, and a range of high-end restaurants. And of course, one of the most advanced marinas in the world that will be able to accommodate super yachts, hoping to attract the global yachting community. Now clearly most people won't be able to afford to go there, but those who are rich enough can expect to have a choice of virtually any activity you could possibly want. Sindala will include wellness centers, spas, and fitness facilities that provide relaxation and rejuvenation. And as a year-round destination, there'll be water sports such as snorkeling, diving, and sailing, all of which will take advantage of the island's pristine waters. And of course, a golf course designed to international standards, ensuring that visitors have access to world-class leisure activities. The island will be powered by renewable energy, in line with Neom's vision of becoming a fully carbon-neutral city, and sustainable design and green technology will be integrated into every aspect of Sindala's infrastructure. Water conservation too, waste management, and energy efficiency will be prioritized to make Sindala not only a luxury destination, but a model for eco-friendly tourism. With Sindala, Saudi Arabia is showing its readiness to compete with established global luxury destinations such as the French Riviera and the Maldives. And with a seemingly endless budget, very few would bet against them managing to do so. Alright, now let's talk about The Line, which is by far the most ambitious project of Vision 2030 and probably the most radical mega-project that's ever been developed. Planned to be a linear, carbon-neutral city that stretches 110 miles or 170 kilometers across the northwestern region of the country, it will redefine the idea of urban living. With a space for 9 million people, its design includes a futuristic, car-free environment powered entirely by renewable energy, with high-speed transportation allowing residents to travel across the city end-to-end -end in just 20 minutes. The concept from the beginning, the line has been described as an unprecedented solution to many of the environmental and societal challenges that are faced by modern cities. A big ambition of the project is to address the issues of urban sprawl and the inefficiencies of traditional city layouts. Going against the more usual horizontal expansion of the cities, which leads to an increased reliance on cars, longer commutes, and environmental issues, the line is a vertical urban model, which confines everything into a 1.2-mile or 2-kilometer-wide corridor. This compact design would not only conserve space, but also reduce the need for personal vehicles, as residents could walk to most destinations within 5 minutes or rely on high-speed public transport. 
By eliminating all the reliance on fossil fuels and creating a zero carbon footprint, the designers of the line wanted to set a global benchmark for green cities. The project also includes plans for advanced water desalinization and conservation techniques aiming to create a self-sustaining urban environment across the middle of the desert. Lots of technology does, however, need to be developed to make this happen, and a big part of the line's plans include the use of artificial intelligence. It's planned to operate as a smart city where an AI system manages everything from energy distribution to public services and even healthcare. Technology would also be central to the city's economy, with the line being a hub for innovation, research, and industries of the future, such as biotechnology, robotics, and digital services. Socially, the line intends to create a new kind of urban experience. Its vertical, high-density design is meant to create communities where everything is within reach, including nature. The city is going to be broken up with vast green spaces and parks, designed to offer residents immediate access to natural environments despite the dense urban layout. So what are the challenges? Well, despite the exciting idea and all the promised benefits that it will bring, the line faces a huge number of major challenges, both in terms of construction and its wider goals. The sheer scale of this project raises questions about feasibility, cost, and sustainability, and whether it will ever be completed. The first major challenge is the technical difficulty involved in building such a city. Constructing such a long urban corridor in a largely undeveloped desert environment presents huge logistical challenges. The terrain is inhospitable, with harsh desert conditions, extreme heat, and very little water. Creating a sustainable, livable environment here requires massive infrastructure investments, including water desalinization plants, energy grids, and transportation systems, all of which need to operate under extreme conditions. Further to this, the ambitious design of the line's vertical, compact cityscape involves developing new architectural and engineering techniques that have not been tested on such a scale. Building vertically, integrated communities with self-sustaining energy systems, public services, and transportation in a confined space requires advanced technology and materials, some of which may not even have been created. These engineering challenges alone could lead to delays and cost overruns, as well as potential compromises in the original vision. As for the cost, the projected cost of building the line, if everything goes to plan, is expected to run into the hundreds of billions, if not trillions, of dollars, making it one of the most expensive urban projects ever attempted. Given the global economic uncertainty and fluctuation in oil prices, financing the long-term construction of the line could be hugely risky, and attracting foreign investment for such an unconventional project is difficult, especially with the risks associated. There's also the question of, even if it is built, who would actually want to live there? The idea of living in a vertical, densely packed city without cars, with strict reliance on public transportation and AI management, is a massive shift from traditional lifestyles, particularly in Saudi Arabia, where lifestyles are based on space, privacy, and personal mobility. There may be, then, very little interest from citizens who are not used to such a high-tech urban lifestyle, and attracting international residents to such a futuristic environment could be challenging, especially if the city's lifestyle is perceived as too controlled or disconnected from nature, even with its promises of green spaces. So that begs the question, will it become a reality? Well, a combination of all these challenges would suggest that, without complete determination and commitment by the Saudi government, the line, while undoubtedly forward-thinking, is going to struggle to become a reality in the way that it was originally promised. The project's reliance on cutting-edge tech, massive financial investments, and engineering challenges create so many different potential points of failure, each of which could derail it all. The financial aspect in particular is probably the biggest issue. The kingdom's economy, even though it's extremely wealthy, is not immune to global market fluctuations. If oil prices were to decline, or if the global move to renewable energy speeds up, Saudi Arabia's primary source of income could be lost. Such an expensive project is unlikely to attract widespread foreign investment without significant proof of concept, which could take years, if not decades, to achieve. In the worst case, it may well come down to how many billions or trillions they're willing to pump into the project, and while the desire may be there, cost always becomes a factor in the end. The complexity of constructing a 110-mile long city in the desert with renewable energy grids, AI systems, and advanced transportation infrastructure raises the possibility of technical challenges that will delay the project or lead to compromises in the original design. 
And since the line was first announced in 2021, there have already been a number of reports that suggest that things aren't exactly going to plan. In 2024, a Bloomberg article claimed that, rather than the planned 9 million residents, the design has already been dramatically reduced to accommodate just 300,000 in a structure that's only 1.5 miles long. Well, the Saudi government strongly denied this, though, saying that things are still going forward exactly as planned. But it wouldn't be too much of a surprise to find out in the next few years that the scope of the entire project is reduced so that it's more practical, possible, and affordable. All right, let's bring it all together. The Saudi government has rightly recognized that the wealth from oil revenues simply couldn't last forever in a world climate where the focus is on moving away from producing energy with fossil fuels to alternatives. It's a smart move to implement such a big initiative while the funds are still there, and it's exciting to see just how ambitious the Vision 2030 plans are, especially as the vast majority of the projects will be completed within the next few years. The majority of these ideas, while they're large in scope, are well within the realms of possibility, even ones like creating huge parklands in the middle of desert cities, or building a winter sports venue in a country that's known for constantly hot temperatures. Many of the projects do make complete financial sense, and even though they involve a huge amount of investment, it's more than likely that they will be completed and go a long way towards Saudi Arabia managing to broaden its economy. The line, however, is a completely different beast altogether and could well be a step too far. Unlike other parts of Vision 2030, the plan is to have that central part of the linear city completed by 2030, with the full thing being finished by 2045. Already, though, these timelines have begun to slip, and the new projected dates are that it will be at least 2050, if not later. A lot can change in 25 years, so most experts think it's sure to fail. Funding for this particular project is already looking tricky, and it's still not yet clear how they expect to be able to build such an advanced structure. There haven't been many who have been convinced that it's somewhere they'd actually like to live, and if this doesn't change anytime soon, then the project will surely be cancelled. Otherwise, Saudi Arabia could end up with a huge structure in the desert that relies on people living in it, but is empty, and it becomes the biggest waste of money and effort that the world has ever seen. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the desert. Thank you to our channel members.